Some of you have some questions about uh, the practice problems. I'm going to do a couple example, more, couple more example problems. Uh, one of them like number one on the practice problem, and one of them like number four. So we're going to start with two masses. This is about Newton's law of universal gravitation. This is mass one. This is mass two, and they are a certain distance apart. I'll call this distance r. I think on the Practice problem was D, but it doesn't matter. It says M1, M2, and that's the distance between them. Remember, the distances are always between the centers. The force of gravity between these two masses is G times M1 times M2 over R squared. So this mass and this mass at that distance produce a force on each other equal to F. Now, we're going to change some things here. Let's say, for example, this mass is going to increase. So this mass is still the same, M1. This mass is going to triple. We'll say this is three times the mass of the original M2. Distance is still the same, still R. How does that change the force? Well, there are a couple of ways to do this. You can look at the equation and notice that the force of gravity is directly related to M2. So if M2 get, goes larger, the force gets larger. If M2 gets smaller, the force gets smaller. Well, let's do this mathematically. So this equation, I'm going to call this, this is now a new force. I'm going to call this Fg prime equal to g times m1 times 3 m2 over r squared. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to take the 3 out and put it in front. 3 times g times m1 times m2 over r squared. Now this quantity, g m1 m2 over r squared, is this quantity. This is the force of gravity on the original setup. So the force of gravity prime is equal to 3 times the original force of gravity. So this new force is 3 times the original force. Again, you can look at it as a mathematical relationship. This force of gravity is directly related to M2 because M2 is in the numerator. There's no power associated with it, so that's a direct relationship. So if you double M2, you double the force. You triple M2, you triple the force. If you quadruple M2, you quadruple the force. If this mass changes by one half, the force changes by one half. Whatever change this occurs on M2, the same change is going to occur for that force. Now let's take a look at distance. Let's say this is still... This is still M1, and we'll say this distance is going to triple. This is still, this is original M2, mass are the same, M1 and M2, but now from center to center, we'll say this is three times the original distance. We can do this the same way. The original force is this, okay? But now this force is different because they're further apart. Call this Fg prime. It's equal to G times M1 times M2 over 3r squared. All right. Let's take a look. Let's simplify this. 3r squared. 3 squared is 9. r squared is r squared. So this is going to equal 1 ninth times g times m1 times m2 over r squared. And here again is the original force, fg. So that means this new force, fg prime, is equal to 1 ninth of the original force. And that makes sense, because look where r is in this equation. It's in the denominator, so that means it's inverse, and it squares. That means it's an inverse square relationship. So, if you triple the distance, you square that, 3 squared is 9, then you invert it. So, 1 over 9 is 1 ninth the original force. If the distance would increase by 4 times the original amount, what's 4 squared? 16, you invert that, that's 1 16th, the inverse square relationship. So the new force, it was four times as far, would be 1 16th of that. Now what if we did both? What if we doubled this mass? I'm sorry, what if we tripled this mass and tripled the distance? Well, tripling the mass, we would have a new force, Fg prime. Tripling the mass would cause the force to triple, and tripling the distance would cause the force to change by 1 9th. So it would have both of those effects. 3 times 1 ninth, this is Fg of the original force. 3 times 1 ninth is 1 third. So if we triple the mass and we triple the distance, the new force will be 1 third of the original force. Okay? That might help you solve problem number 1 on that practice problem sheet. This is practice number 1. The same type of reasoning can be done with that. Right? All right, let's take a look at another example problem similar to uh, problem number four. 
I'm just going to draw this out. I'm going to write the whole problem. Let's say we have the Earth. This is the Earth. And we have a satellite above the Earth. We'll say this is a satellite. And the mass of the satellite, we'll say, is 1,200 kilograms. And the height of the satellite, the height is the distance it is above the Earth's surface. From the Earth's surface to the satellite, it's the height of the satellite. We'll say that height is 725 kilometers. And we want to know, what is the gravitational force on that satellite? Well, we know that the equation is, I'm going to put it down here, force of gravity is equal to g times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the satellite over the orbital radius of the satellite. Now, that orbital radius of the satellite is the distance from the center of the Earth to the satellite. That's not the height. So what we need to do, the orbital radius, let's put the mass of the Earth in here. We know the mass of the Earth, and we can look it up. Because remember, we have this uh, planetary data table. We don't remember what the mass of the Earth is. This is the Earth. The mass is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, so this is the mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So now we need, so we have the mass of the Earth, we have the mass of the satellite, we need the orbital radius of the satellite, which is from the center of the Earth to the satellite. Well, we're given the height. We want this entire distance, so we need this distance right here. This distance from the center of the Earth to the surface of the Earth is the radius of the Earth. The radius of the Earth, we can look up on our planetary data sheet, the radius of the Earth is 6.38 times 10 to 6 meters. So we want this entire distance. So the orbital radius of the satellite is going to be the radius of the Earth plus the height of the satellite. But notice, since we're dealing with force, and force is in newtons, which is a kilogram meter per second squared, and we have this distance of the Earth in meters, we're going to have to change this kilometers so we have consistent units of meters. So we just have to convert 725 kilometers to meters. 1,000 meters over 1 kilometer, that should be 7.25 times 10 to the fifth meters. That is the height of the satellite in meters. Now we need to add that to the radius of the Earth. So the orbital radius of the satellite is going to be 6.38 times 10 to the sixth meters plus the height in meters, 7.25 times 10 to the fifth meters. And if we add that up, we should get about 7.51 times 10 to the six meters. That's what this number is. Orbital, oops, that's a square there. Orbital radius of the satellite. Don't forget to square that number. So we do the calculation. Force of gravity, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared times the mass of the Earth. 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms times the mass of the satellite, 1,200 kilograms divided by the orbital radius of the satellite, which is 7.51 times 10 to the 6 meters. Don't forget to square that. Use parentheses, parentheses all your friends. I'm going to do this calculation on the calculator, see how it works. And so we have, turn on, clear everything, 6.67 times 10, make sure you write this in scientific notation, minus 11 times 5.98 times 10 to the 24 times 1,200 divided by 7.51 times 10 to the 6, square that number. Again, make sure you have all the scientific notation written correctly, and you enter that, and we'll round this to 8,486 newtons. This force of gravity, is 8,486 newtons. Right? The main thing here is understanding how you get the orbital radius of the satellite. You have to add the radius of the Earth and the height of the satellite. Uh, the answer key is provided, but I suggest you go through and recheck your answers, and then check the answer sheet, and then take the quiz.